Well, here we are back again, and with me I have Solomon uh, Kafour on, and uh, very pleased to have him on today, because today we're talking about Malawi, um, and you'll say, where is Malawi? And that's in? It's in Southern Africa. It's a small country. It shares borders with Zambia, Tanzania, and Mozambique. And is it a troubled country? Yes, it is. Um, there's a lot of challenges as far as like financial needs is concerned. It's rampant with HIV and AIDS. Yeah, I heard One that. of the highest in Southern Africa, malaria is also a big challenge. So there's a lot of development issues that is concerned with Malawi as a country. Yeah, and um, you, I want to say that uh, Solomon has been in the Peace Corps, and you just you decided to go to the Peace Corps and do Malawi. Do they assign it to you, or do you say, I want to go to Malawi? They don't actually assign it to you. Yeah. They place you where the need is. Okay. So pretty much I was assigned as a community health advisor. Okay. So given that that was the scenario, I was placed in Malawi because of the high need and, and you're saying health, you work yes, in health. Yes. Okay, good. The AIDS situation is horrendous in, in um, Africa. Definitely. And not just Malawi, but many of the countries. Definitely. They don't like to always talk about it, but it is a very serious issue. Right. Uh, part of it is that uh, I think women are, are certainly not thought well of right. in Mal not just Malawi, but m many of the African countries. How did you see them uh, in, in that setting, women? Or young girls? Young girls and women in particular. It was very hard for me when I first went over there because the first month we had to stay in the host community village. And I remember I stayed with a host family and my mother, or uh, Amai, which is referred to in Chichewa, mm -hmm. which is a predominantly language spoken in Malawi. And I remember one night I was having a dinner with my father, the Abambo, uh -huh. and she came kneeling down and placing the, t the, the food on the table. And that really was a shocking to me. We don't do that here for you. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So I said, why is she doing this, you know? And I was very thrown off. So it kind of like bothered me. And the subordination of women, especially on young girls, a lot of them are powerless when it comes to the school system. The That's male teachers I mean. abuse a lot of the authority. You know, there's a lot of relationship going on that are not permitted, but they do so. Yeah. In the end, most of these girls get uh, infected with HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. because they have no say. So it's, it's a plight that is very devastating to the country. And I think now having Joyce Banda, who is the second female elected African president on the continent, is very hopeful for many of these young girls because now they have a voice mm -hmm. that they never had before. And she's done, she's done a good job. And in the past, we've had her nephew on, Kenny Banda, who right. is very active in trying to get uh, girls involved in sports, see, right. thinking that maybe that would give them right. more of an identity right. and not that have to be subservient and, right. and that. Now, you brought some photos. Let's look at the photos. Sure. And, and they're right there. They'll be on that screen. And tell us what we're looking at. Well, this photo here, mm -hmm. I took it during my COS conference, which is closing of service. And the other two brothers that are sitting next to me are actually Malawians, and they work in the Peace Corps. So we had a nice, fancy dinner. You know, given that I live in a rural community village, so it was a major treat for me to be able to sit here and enjoy a happy, you know, lunch. This is a baba tree that I took in my village, and I was coming from a friend in a Peace Corps house. So when I came around the tree, it really struck a chord in me wow. because it's beautiful, it's strong. And uh, it kind of like sign, you know, signifies some um, hope and also solidarity. So I took the tree and one of my biggest projects was also promoting books because I feel like education is very essential and if we can have a sustainable future, we have to invest in the youth. So one of my major embarkment in a Peace Corps was handing out over 250 books. So this is one of the photos that I took. Are those in English? Yes, they are. Now, they read English, but they speak a different language. How does that work? They read English and try to speak English, but they speak Chichewa, which is the local language, is a major challenge. Is that a, a written language as well? It is a written language. Okay. And they actually take a course on that in school. And sometimes it can be very challenging because I remember when I went, one of the challenges that I had as African-American volunteer was that they were used to always see me as a Malawian. 
And oh, it, they, and not as an American. Right, right. Well, in a way, that works in a way. Right. Because they'll be more accepting, maybe, of your advice. <laughs> Definitely. It, it, it can be advantageous and also disadvantageous in, in, a, in a lot of ways. And otherwise, they think you're pretty stupid because you can't speak the language, <laughs> right? <laughs> In a way, because I remember, you know, sometimes I'd be with my Peace Corps volunteers friends in a village, and they would come up to me, and they would say, Mulubwanji, which is, hello, how are you? And my other Peace Corps volunteers would get, hello, how are you doing? And they said, well, he don't understand, he's American. They're like, uh-uh. But he looked like Malawi, how can he be American? So, you know, it was kind of like challenging in the beginning to try to, like, overcome that, and for them to understand that we have diversity of people in a states, mm -hmm. and not necessarily just, you know, yeah. white folks, you know. So that was a major impediment. But after a while, they got used to me in the community. They understood what I was there for, and it became easier. And I began to, you know, eventually pick up the Chichewa language and be able to relate to them Oh, more. my gosh, so how right. wonderful. And, well, you were there two years. Let's, are we done with the photos? I'm not sure how far we've gone. Okay. This is another photo that we took at my closing of service. Once again, um, at the very, you know, bottom, I think to the far uh, left. And uh, that was my whole group within the health sector. So we took that and those two uh, lady and gentlemen were my supervisor and assistant supervisor. And the rest of the people were just my group. So we were very happy because it was very challenging and tough, you know, two years. So you had quite a few in Malawi? Were they all in Malawi? Definitely. Oh, definitely, wow. Definitely. And this photo was taken pretty much now the oftenest that I had the chance to work with. And we have an activity, an activity that we had done on that day. It's called Go Girls. And these are the girls from the orphanage. And many of them, at least 95% of them, had lost both parents to HIV and AIDS. So we, <gasps> we try to provide, you know, a sustainable home for them, trying to educate them. Oh, my them. gosh. And they were very happy, as you can see in the photos. Yeah. And this is a photo I took in my village of the little boys and girls playing soccer or football uh -huh. in a village and you know it was just very reminiscent very big there and, and they and they don't need a lot of equipment for soccer definitely, so that makes definitely. it really good definitely what what is the major religion there is there one um christianity is a major religion followed by islam islam okay definitely. good because some of the african countries are mainly uh, islamic right so i just kind of wondered what, what how malawi was yeah. malawi has a strong christian hold okay so Definitely. And this is a photo I took at the beach, um, Lake Malawi, and I came across these young men or boys, and they were actually promoting their music. So they would approach you no know, tourists, they would play some song, they would dance to it, then eventually they would hope to get some money out oh, of no. it <laughs> to you know make some ends meet. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Right. So, and these are some of the children once again from the orphanage, and I took them on a trip, and. To many of them, it was the first time that they have actually been to a zoo. Oh. So we went and they saw animals, they saw many other mammals, and... Uh, and they didn't think about killing them, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> they, they saw elephants and a whole bunch of stuff. This is the church I used to go in a village, and that's Pastor Camber in, in the uh, middle, and that's another brother from the church, and I took it with them one day after we had a closing of service, and up to this day, I still reflect on that whenever you know, I see this photo. You know, it's it, you, when I hear you talk, um, Solomon. You you know you talk about your mother and your father there and your brothers. It's like you became part of their community. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Would you recommend people thinking about going into the Peace Corps after your experience of two years? Absolutely. I think it's a life changing journey that one can ever take. I mean, it would change your whole perspective. Looking back at the states, we take so many things for granted. Being able to put yourself in the shoes of people for two years. Is, is just a major, I don't even know what, what word to use to de describe it. It would just make you a better person. It would help you to have a better understanding of other cultures. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the main focal points of the Peace Corps, to, to be able to promote cross-cultural exchange and to be able to promote friendship on a part of the United States mm -hmm. and also other countries that we are serving in. So, people to people, too. Definitely, yeah, definitely, that, definitely. So important because it's so hard to be feel anger at another person that you know. You can feel anger country to country because it's impersonal. The minute you put a face on it, Definitely. it's a lot harder to be. Definitely. And I remember one thing that has stuck to me up to this day, and it was pretty much uh, a term that one of the Peace Corps doctors had utilized in the Peace Corps, and he has an accident by birth. And up to this day, I would never forget because a lot of these kids is not a fault of their own that they were born to poverty mm -hmm. and to be able to you know, think of your life chances in surviving is minimal, you know, and we have so much, you know, at our disposal. Even here. the poorest in this country have more than Definitely. what those 
definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I want I really applaud what definitely. you've done because it took two years out of your life, but it was really an education definitely. and a gift, wasn't definitely. it? Definitely. Yeah. And uh, we're talking with Solomon Kafour, and uh, very pleased to have him on to talk about Malawi. Maybe I can get him on sometime with Kenny Banda so we could have sure. really a, a, a discussion on Malawi. But many of the African countries. How did you see them uh, in, in that setting, women or was, young girls? Young girls and women in particular. It was very hard for me when I first went over there because the first month we had to stay in the host community village. And I remember I stayed with a host family, and my mother, or uh, Amai, which is referred to. That uh, Solomon has been in the Peace Corps, and you just you decided to go to the Peace Corps and do Malawi. Do they assign it to you, or do you say, I want to go to Malawi? They don't actually assign it to you. Yeah. They place you where the need is. Okay. So pretty much I was assigned as a community health advisor. Okay. So given that that was the scenario, I was placed in Malawi because of the high need and, and you're saying health, you worked yes, in health. Yes. Okay, good. The AIDS situation is horrendous in, in um, Africa. Definitely. And not just Malawi, but many of the countries. Definitely. They don't like to always talk about it, but it is a very serious issue. Right. Uh, part of it is that uh, I think women are, are certainly not thought well of right. in, Mal in not just Malawi. It's a troubled country. Yes, it is. Um, there's a lot of challenges as far as like financial, Needs is concerned is rampant HIV and AIDS, yeah, one that. of the highest in Southern Africa. Malaria is also a big challenge. So there's a lot of development issues that is concerned with Malawi as a country. Yeah, and um, you, I want to say. Well, here we are back again, and with me I have Solomon uh, Kafour on, and uh, very pleased to have him on today. Because today we're talking about Malawi, um, and you'll say, where is Malawi? And that's in? It's in Southern Africa. It's a small country. It shares borders with Zambia, Tanzania, and Mozambique. And is 